Now regarding the green shawl, there's a lot of interesting controversies and deceptions going on. And here I want to clearly prove that the followers of that Dajjal really will be wearing green shawls according to the prophecies. But for example, in some copies of Musnad Ahmad, instead of saying green shawls, it says crowns. You see the hadith is يَخْرُجُ الدَّجَلَ مِنْ يَهُودِيَةِ إِسْبَحَانْ مَا هُوْ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفًا مِنَ الْيَهُودِ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّيْجَانِ But in some versions, instead of سَيْجَان, it says تَيْجَان, which means crowns. So, in some copies of the same book of Mustad Ahmad, it says Dajjal's followers who will come from Isfahan, from Iran, will be wearing green shawls. But in other copies, it says crowns. And I've noticed that the versions that say, the, the version that say crowns is <laughs> being uh, uh, published more by these governments that we have today. But in some copies it says Sai uh, John, and in some copies it says Tai John. So the question is, which version is right and which one is wrong? And obviously this this could be a mistake because Tai John and Sai John are very similar words, or it could be, could be a deliberate attempt by someone to alter. The word from Taijan, from Saijan to Taijan. So how do we know for certain that the correct word is Saijan or green shawls? Well, one way is as I mentioned earlier in uh, Sunan Ibn Majah, we already saw that it actually says Saj, which means green shawl. But not only that, in uh, Musannaf Abdul Razak, it is narrated the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 from the people of my Ummah wearing green shawls and in Arabic it says Saijan. So again we see that it's Saijan. So the fact that Musanaf Abdul Razak, which is also one of the oldest hadith books similar to Musan Ahmad, the fact that this book also says Saijan uh, indicates that the correct word really was Saijan and not Taijan or crowns. But it was Saijan or Green Shawls. But if you want even more proof that it was uh, Green Shawls, uh, in Sahih Muslim it says that Jal will be followed by 70,000 Yahudis of Isfahan who will be wearing the Tayalisa. Yet about that Jalam in Yahuda Isfahan, Sabuna Alf and Alehim Tayalisa. So here it even uses a different word entirely that has the same meaning as Saijan. So there's no confusion here. There's no way that um, Tayalisa is a mistake and uh, it, uh, it's a mistake in the copies or in the pronunciation because Tayalisa is a completely different word from uh, Saijan and Taijan. I mean, it's written completely differently in Arabic. Even the T, even the T of Tayalisa is different from the T of Taijan. Uh, if you know Arabic, you know that there are different T's. So this word is completely different. Uh, and therefore, the fact that it has the same meaning as Saijan proves once again that the Jal's followers will be wearing green shawls. Now, again, uh, in uh, many translations, uh, Tayalesa is translated as Persian shawls. And some people might say, well, Persian shawls, we don't know what color they are. But uh, if you look at the commentators of the Hadith, all the commentators that I've looked into, they all said, uh, pretty, pretty much every commentator, has said that Tayalesa means green shawl. But if you have any doubt that Tayalesa means green shawl, we have proof from the Shia's own books. We even have proof from the Shia's own books because in the Shia book Kamaluddin, it is written Tayalesa, uh, green Tayalesa. So it, it actually says green Tayalesa. So even though Tayalesa itself mean, is a word that was used for a green shawl, in this Shia narration, in their own book, it actually says green Tayalesa. So there is no doubt that Tayalesa is a green shawl. So even if you translate uh, Tayalesa as Persian shawl, then you would have to say green Persian shawl. So there is absolutely no doubt that they will be wearing green shawls. And furthermore, in the Sunni book, there's, in the Sunni books, there's also a narration that also says green Tayalesa. And it says uh, uh, that Jal will appear while riding on a moon white or very white donkey, the distance between its two ears being 70 cubits, 
with him will be 70,000 Yahudis who will be wearing green tayalesas. Now, what's interesting about this hadith is that uh, if you look at other versions of the hadith that describe the donkey of Dajjal, they say that the donkey will be uh, flying in the sky and it is huge. It's a huge donkey that will be flying at a very high speed in the clouds and it's white. And all this indicates that it's referring to an airplane. You see, it's, uh, it's the two ears, when it says the distance between his ears being 70 cubits, so it's saying that it has two very large ears, which is obviously referring to airplane wings. And, it says, and in, I said, if you read the other versions in, in Mustadrak al Hakim, for example, it says it will be flying in the sky, in the clouds, so that Jal will be riding on a plane, probably, most likely, or something similar to a plane. And uh, as I explained earlier on my older videos, uh, I actually believe that this is referring to Iran Air, because the symbol of Iran Air is a donkey. And it says that Jal will be riding on a donkey. <laughs> and Iran's airplane symbol is actually a donkey with wings. Anyway, um, uh, what's also interesting is that in Sahih Bukhari, it is narrated that Anas anhu, looked at the people wearing the tayalesa, green shawls or tayalesa. On that, Anas anhu, said, at this moment, they look like the Yahud of Khaybar. So this shows that the Yahud of Khaybar who fought against our Prophet, they used to wear green shawls. And it's very interesting that to this day, the Shias claim that the Sunnis have stolen the land of Khaybar from the Shias. <laughs> now, where, the, where did the Muslims get the land of Khaybar from? The Muslims got the land of Khaybar after the Yahud, after the Kabbalist Jews betrayed the Muslims. And the, even though Judaism is supposedly anti-pagan, these hypocrite Jews allied with the pagans, with the, with the idol worshippers, with the Satanists, against the Muslims. And the Muslims, uh, even though they had made a treaty with the Muslims, they allied with the pagans against the Muslims. And so the Muslims fought against them and defeated them. And after defeating the tribe, they took their land from them. And to this day, the Shia say the land of Khaybar has been stolen from us by the Sunnis. And they, of course, you know, say that it's about Ali, Imam Ali and Fatima. The land belonged to Fatima and it was stolen. But uh, the, f the thing is that even if the land belonged to uh, Fatima Razi Allah Anha, the point is that's not even an issue. Uh, it, whether you believe it belonged to Fatima or not, that's not even an issue because, okay, it belongs to Fatima. Uh, what does this have to do with the Shias? Uh, let's give it to Fatima. Where's Fatima? She, uh, is Fatima Razi Allah Anha here? No. So how are we going to give the land of Khaybar to Fatima when she's not here? And the Shias keep saying, we, need, we want to take the land of Khaybar back. Well, it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to Fatima anha, or Ali anha, not to you. So what are the Shias actually talking about? <laughs> they want the land of Khaybar because the land of Khaybar belongs to the Yahud, to the Kabbalist Jews, who used to wear green shawls, they wore the Tayalesa. And this also shows, this hadith in Sahih Bukhari, all, this narration also shows that this clothes was exclusively worn by the Yahud. So it's not really actually a Persian shawl. You know, the translations, the Saudi English translations of Sai Muslim, they translate it as Persian shawls. But it wasn't a Persian shawl. This narrations from Sai Bukhari clearly proves that it wasn't a Persian shawl. It was the shawl of the Yahud of Khaybar. Okay, so why do the Saudis translate it as Persian shawl? The, the Saudis keep trying to, you know, trick people into thinking that it's all about Arabs versus Persians so that uh, we will not pay attention to Israel and Zionism and the, the crypto Jews uh, who are in Saudi Arabia itself. And inshallah, we'll get uh, into that in on another video, how the Saudis themselves are also Yahudi, Kuffar and Satanists. But the point is, uh, it's also narrated in Sunan Abu Dawood that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who resembles a people is one of them. And I put by wearing their clothes in brackets because it, this uh, hadith is actually in a chapter called Book of Clothes. Okay, so it's about clothes. Accord, even according to Abu Dawud himself, this hadith is about clothes. Because some people complained to me, they said, uh, when I made that video about the hats and turbans, they said, that, no, 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 uh, the, when the Prophet said, whoever resembles a people is one of them, he wasn't talking about clothes, he, he wasn't talking about turbans and hats. Uh, he was talking about something else. But as you can see clearly in Sunan Abu Dawud, 
This is actually in the chapter of clothes. So yes, the Prophet was talking about clothes. So that means that the Saudi Kofar who wear the clothes of the Yahud are also Yahudi Kofar. And so are the Shias. The Shias are also Yahudi Kofar. Okay, and this hadith proves it. And the fact that Abu Dawud even placed this hadith in this chapter of the book of clothes proves that you know I'm not making up a new context and uh, of the of this hadith. This was the interpretation of the very people who wrote the hadith down okay so it's not my opinion it's the opinion of uh, abu dawood it's the opinion of uh, sulaiman abu dawood it's not my opinion okay it's not uh, my uh, new interpretation <laughs> And here we see the Shias have written Allah but in the form of a one eye Freemason symbol. If you can't read Arabic, on the, the, the writings on the top of the eye is Allah. So he's saying Allah is one eyed. You see, because it's showing the symbol of the one eye and saying Allah is one eyed. Even though it says in Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that Dajjal is one eyed and your Lord is not one eyed. So this shows that the Allah of the Shias is actually Dajjal. And here's the hadith from Sayyid Bukhari. Allah did not send any prophet unless they warned their nation of the one-eyed liar who is blind in one eye while your Lord is not one-eyed. So as you can see, the hadith clearly tells us that Dajjal will claim to be Allah, that Dajjal will claim to be our Lord even though he is one-eyed, and this is the clearest sign for anyone who, you know, who is a Muslim not to be fooled by him. And we see that the Shias are already subliminally preparing the, the people, their followers, into accepting Dajjal as Allah. نام نازنین حضرت ابو عبدالله الحسین فراتر از جغرافی های تاریخ و کجا من رو افتاد؟ زهر آشمان من رو افتاد اونی که افتاد احباس بود یا به مجلس
Remember that the Prophet Muhammad said according to Sahih Muslim that that Dajjal's eye will be like a floating grape. به نام خداوند جان و خرد که از این برتر اندیشه بر نگذرد خداوند ایرانیان عزیزی که در هر جای و اما در مورد سریال افسون چگونه دعوت به کار شدید و پذیرفتید چون من میدونم شما هر کاری رو به راحتی میدونم See how often they show the one eye symbol is even more or, or at, at least as much as you see in, uh, in the Western media. I noticed that they show this you know, innocent children smiling and then they show you the eye of that gel in order to associate the eye of that gel with innocence and uh, purity and also with God and with uh, you know with Allah and with uh, everything that's you know Islamic. They try to associate that with that gel instead. So they're subliminally preparing the people of Iran and the people of the whole world uh, for the coming of that Dajjal. And this is the Iran that we're often told is so Islamic and oh, Iran is standing up to, to America. Notice they are using the same subliminal messages, the same symbolism, the same beliefs. It's all the same. It's only uh, appears to be different. If, if you, you only think they're different if you believe everything you hear on, on the news. But if you investigate independently, you see that there is no difference between Iran, America, yeah. Israel, and Russia and Saudi Arabia. و به همین خاطر بعد از این دو قرن ایرانی ها به معنای واقعی فهمیدن باید اسلام رو نگه دارن اما سلطه عرب رو که یک سلطه در واقع مهاجمانه و بیگانه است رو از خود ترد کنن و در نتیجه شما ملازم میفرمایید که ایرانی ها بعد از دو قرن بالاخره دولت های بومی و محلی در ایران تأسیس کردن اما اسلام رو نگه داشتن یعنی بعضی که دولت های بومی و محلی تأسیس شد اسلام به کنار این حاده نشد که بگن عرب رفت دینش باید بره Now this one is really really interesting. It's a subliminal message. I'm not sure if you can catch it. I mean, of course you can see the eye, but it's not just the eye. Notice that um, if you pay very close attention, you see that they have placed a very satanic subliminal message in the background. It's not just the eye of that gel, but notice that there's the word God. You can barely see it. It's transparent. It's almost invisible. If you pay very close attention, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Can you see that the word God? It says God in English. And the, the reason why it's in English is that this is Iran's TV channel for Iranians who live uh, outside of Iran. So for English speaking Iranians. It's, uh, for, it's made by the government of Iran itself, but for, Iran, but for Iranians who speak in English. Okay, so they have programs for uh, Iranians who speak, uh, uh, Iranians who live in America and Britain and Australia. Okay, uh, so this uh, channel is called Jam Jam, but but it's, uh, but it's made by Iran itself, by Khamenei, by the government of Iran. And um, you see that in English it says God, G O D, God. And notice that it's pointing. You see, it's pointing up, and if you would follow it, you see that it's pointing up and then left towards the eye. You see, and next to the eye, there's the number one. So what, what is it actually saying? It's subliminally saying God is 
one eyed. Look, uh, it says God, and then it's pointing, so that means it is. So you know, like point, when you're pointing, you're saying this is this. So you're saying God is this. What is God? God is one, the number one. And what's next to the one? The eye. So he's saying God is one eyed. So they're appearing to be uh, uh, having an Islamic program where they're answering people's questions about Islam and you know people call in and say is it haram if I do this is it halal if I do this how should I pray how should I fast and this uh, religious guy is explaining to them how they should uh, you know uh, fast and pray and do other uh, you know religious things and yet subliminally they're telling people to worship Dajjal it says God, God is one eyed and notice that the eye is also green and in Musnad Ahmad the Prophet said according to Musnad Ahmad that Dajjal's eye is green so this is definitely the eye of Dajjal and it's, they're telling the people of Iran subliminally that God is one eyed now why would they do this if these people are actually Muslims it's obvious that these people worship Dajjal these people are Satanists or Yahudis there's no other way. There's no way that these people can be Muslims. These are not Muslims. These are the, these are not Muslims. The government of Iran is completely run by Dajjal worshippers, by Freemasons, by Zionists, whatever you want to call them, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. And anyone who still thinks that I'm, you know, crazy or whatever, that I'm, I have to tell you something. You are crazy. <laughs> and also remember that in this version of the Hadith. The Prophet referred to these Yahudis as my Ummah or my nation. In other words, these will be Yahudis who will claim to be Muslims. That's why in this version of the Hadith, it actually says my Ummah. In the other versions, it says 70,000 Yahudis. But in this version, it says 70,000 from my Ummah. So this proves that it's not talking about the Israelis or you know Jews who admit the Jews who admit that they are Jews because Imran Hussein and many other Munafiqeen and Kuffar on the internet they claim that this is referring to actual Jews who live in Iran the Jewish minority in Iran even though Iran doesn't even have 70,000 Jews and Imran Hussein claims that no 70,000 is a metaphorical number it just means a lot of Jews <laughs> because you know for 70,000 Jews to join that jail Obviously, it's not going to be the children or every single Jew, obviously. So, it's talking about an army of 70,000 Jews. So, for in order for an army of 70,000 Jews to join that jail, there would have to, be, have to be hundreds of thousands or millions of Jews in Iran in order for that jail to have an army of 70,000. And this is actually an, an army because it says in the Hadith that they will have weapons. So, these are not ordinary people. Okay, so Dajjal is going to have an army of 70,000 and Imran Hussein and many other, many other Munafiqeen, many of the Saudis also, even the people who pretend to be against Iran and pretend to be against the Shias, they say this is referring to actual Jews, Jewish minorities coming from Iran. But no, this is not true. This is clearly referring to the Shias because the Hadith even says in Musanaf Abdul Razak that they are from my Ummah, they are from my nation. So these are Munafiqeen, these are not Jews who admit to being Jews, these are Munafiq Jews, these are, these are Jews or I should say Yahudis who are secretly working with Israel but who claim to be Muslims. And as I explained in my book uh, titled the Yajuj and Majuj or Zionist Jews, Israel is actually Yajuj and Majuj, they are the Gog and Magog. Israel is not the Dajjal followers, they, they, I mean they, they may worship Dajjal but they are not the actual Dajjal followers who are mentioned in the Hadith. The Israelis, they are the Gog and Magog. And the Bible actually says that the Gog and Magog will come from Russia. And most Israelis today have actually come from Russia. They originate from Russia. Most of the, even the Jews that came to Israel from Europe, they are from Russian origin. Okay, so these are the Russian Jews. These are the Gog and Magog. These are from Rosh, Meske and Tubal. As it says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. So the, uh, there's two groups, there's the Yajuj and Majuj and then there's the crypto Yahudis, the crypto Jews who will claim to be Muslims, who will appear to be from the Ummah of the Prophet. They, they will be uh, from, the, uh, you know, they will, uh, they will say the Shahada. And it even says in another version of, of the Hadith, it even says that Dajjal will claim that he's a follower of the Prophet, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Okay, so Dajjal will actually claim to be a Muslim. 
it is very important to understand that the 12th Imam of the Shias is the Dajjal. The one that the Shias are waiting for and they're calling him their 12th Imam is actually Dajjal. I'm not saying that the, their 12th Imam exists. I'm saying that the person that they're going to eventually join is Dajjal. There, there was no such thing as the 12th Imam. Hassan al-Askari didn't have a son. But the person that the Shias are eventually going to follow and whom their leaders are leading them subliminally to follow and that's why their leaders tell them that you have to follow us blindly. The, the Shia leaders, they tell their, their, their followers that you have to follow us blindly so that they can lead them towards following Dajjal eventually. That's why the Shias believe in Taqlid. There is no such thing as Taqlid in Islam. As I've proven many times in, on my past videos, Taqlid, according to the Hadith, is Shirk. Taqlid or blind following is Shirk. And anyone who claims to be a Muslim and who actually does taqlid is actually not a Muslim. They are not Muslims. They are outside of Islam. They are munafiqeen. They are kuffar. Okay? So all the Shias and all the, those other sects, Sufi sects that also believe in taqlid, they are all outside of Islam. They are all Yahudis and other munafiqeen who have infiltrated Islam. But this is the reason why the Shias, just like the Jewish rabbis, the Shia religious leaders, insist that their followers must do taqlid and when i was a shia i was even told that if i don't do, ta do taqlid I i'm a kafir they said that even if you're a shia but you don't do, ta do taqlid from us you don't follow us blindly then you're a kafir my, my my own father told me this when i was a shia and that was actually one of the reasons why i left shiism <laughs> and all the shias believe in taqlid although um, the majority of them believe in that they have to do taqlid of the clergy or the, the column Ayatollahs, but there are also a small group of Shias who believe that no, they must only do taqlid of the 12 Imams. So they are also going to end up following Dajjal eventually. But the majority of Shias, not only do they do taqlid of the 12 Imams, they also do taqlid of the so called Ayatollahs. Over 99% of the Shias, they do taqlid of the Ayatollahs, Ayatollah Dajjals, these rabbis who claim to be Muslims who claim to be Muslim uh, religious leaders, you know, mujtahids, uh, scholars. And so th th it's very important to understand that this is the reason why the Shias keep insisting that you must do taqlid. As the majority of us are a muqallid, we follow and act upon the teachings of a mujtahid. Okay, now here's even more proof that the Shias are actually Yahudis. There's actually so much proof that I, uh, we don't even need any more proof. I don't think we need any more proof after this, but there's so much more left. For example, in Sahih Bukhari, it is narrated that when the Yahudi people of Khaybar dislocated Abdullah ibn Omar's hands and feet, Omar got up and uh, he delivered the sermon. And it's a very long, long story, but basically, Omar al Khattab who expelled the Yahud of Khaybar, you know, the, the Yahudis who used to wear the green shawl. Omar who expelled them uh, because they injured his son. He, they badly injured his son. So this shows the hatred that the Yahud had for Omar ibn Khattab anhu, that they even captured his son and beat him up so badly that they dislocated his hands and feet. And it's interesting that to this day, the Shias have a really, re I mean, extreme hatred of Omar ibn Khattab. They hate him even more than everyone else of the Sahaba. And, you know, some, one of the tricks that they are using on us in the media is that they keep telling us that the Shias hate Muawiyah. But in reality, the Shias, the person that the Shias hate the most, the Shia religious leaders, their Shia books, hate the most is Omar. So much so that in the Shia book, uh, in one of the Shia books called, uh, what's it called? Asrar Ali Muhammad, it says that Omar is worse than Satan and that Omar is the worst person ever in, in the whole of creation. From the beginning of time to the end of time, there's a, there will never be a, a man worse than Omar. Okay? So that's, much, that's how much the Shias hate Omar ibn Khattab. They call him the worst man ever. Okay? And this was the man who expelled the Yahudis who wore the green shawls from the Arabian Peninsula after they beat and injured his son. 
So now you understand the reason, the real reason why the Shias hate Omar so much. And guess what? It was the same Yahudis of Khaybar who poisoned the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi And now you understand why the Shias instead they claim that it was the wife of the Prophet, his own wife, who poisoned him. They say that his own wife Aisha poisoned him. Whereas we see that in the oldest books, and you know, Sunni books are much older than Shia books. And Shia books were actually forged, they're forgeries. Many, many Shia religious leaders have actually admitted that their books were forgeries. They, they were written even after the time that they claimed they were written. But according to the oldest books, we see that it was the Yahud of Khaybar, the Jews of Khaybar, the Kabbalist Jews of Khaybar, who poisoned our Prophet and killed him. So that's why the Shias instead claim that no, it was his own wife who killed him. Even though the Quran says that evil wives are for evil men and good wives are for good men. So when the Shias say that Ummul Mu'minin Aisha was an evil woman, she was an evil wife, they are also calling the Prophet evil. Because the Quran says that good women are for good men and evil women are for evil men. And the Prophet never divorced Ummul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha. So what are the Shias claiming that they know better than the Prophet and they know better than Allah? No, it's obvious that the only reason the Shias <laughs> took the blame away from the Yahud of Khaybar and instead placed it on Ummul Mu'minin Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, is because it was they, it was the Shias themselves who poisoned the Prophet. It was these same Rafizi Shias, these Shia to Dajjal, these Yahudi Shias, they were the ones who poisoned our Prophet and they also tried to kill the son of Omar radiallahu anhu. And that eventually Omar, Omar radiallahu anhu got fed up, fed up with them, uh, he, when he, was, he, he got really mad at them and expelled them from Arabia. And to this day the Shias want to take the revenge against Omar and they want to take back the land of Khaybar that the Prophet took from them after defeating them. And this is what the Shia Sunni war is all about. This is what, not, what they never tell you on the media. They never tell you this on TV or even on the internet, in this fake internet that we have today, where you, know, you got all these actors pretending to be Muslim religious leaders, Muslim scholars. None of them tell you these things. They all tell you that Shia Sunni began as a difference of opinion over Abu Bakr or Omar. The people who support Abu Bakr are called Sunni, and the people who support Ali are called Shia. And some of them even lie even further and they say that the Sunnis support Muawiyah and the Shias support Ali. And you got all these uh, stupid videos on YouTube right now where you got this Shia wearing a green shawl saying that Muawiyah was bad and then they got these fake Sunnis saying that no, Muawiyah was a, mo a good person and you know, the, the fake Sunnis defend Muawiyah and then these Yahudi Shias d defend Ali. When in reality it's got nothing to do with Muawiyah and Ali or even Abu Bakr and Ali. The difference, the real difference between Shias and Sunnis, according to the Sunnis, according to the majority of Sunnis, the real Sunni books, not the fake Sunni scholars you see on TV, not these actors, not these Freemason actors, but according to the original Sunni books, the difference between Shias and Sunnis is that the Sunnis are Muslims, whereas the Shias are Yahudi Jews pretending to be Muslims. And inshallah, we will continue this on part 3 of this video. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.